In this video, you'll learn about searching WorldCap using the Simplified Cataloging role in WorldShare Record Manager. After watching this video, you should be able to search WorldCap using standard numbers such as ISBN and ISSN, keywords such as title and author, and you should also be able to do an advanced search including title phrase searches, publisher numbers, and universal product codes. You should be able to use facets to refine searches and switch between the condensed and enhanced view of search results. WorldCat is the world's most comprehensive database of information about library collections. WorldCat has more than 500 million bibliographic records, and more than one new record is added every second. So it's important to search efficiently so you can quickly find the record that matches the item you're cataloging. On the basic search screen, you can search by standard numbers such as ISBN or by keyword, title, or author. To search other indexes, use the advanced search screen. If available, try an ISBN search first. The International Standard Book Number, or ISBN, is a 10 or 13 digit number assigned by the publisher. There is an international ISBN agency that coordinates national ISBN agencies which in turn assign ranges of ISBNs to publishers. This example shows the ISBN on the back of the title page, also known as the title page verso, or TP verso, in the Cataloging of Publication, or CIP area. Notice that it's printed with hyphens. For searching, omit the hyphens. It's also on the back cover, both in iReadable form and as a barcode. If you have a barcode reader, Scanning the ISBN barcode is a great way to save time and increase accuracy. This is another example of the ISBN on the title page verso and is a barcode on the back cover. Let's see how to search an ISBN. I signed into Simplified Cataloging. I'll open Record Manager and I'll accept the default scope, which is all WorldCat. I'll change the index to ISBN. Then I'll scan the ISBN barcode, or type the ISBN, and press the Enter key or click Search. To refine my search, I can select the facets Language of Cataloging English and Print Book. To do another ISBN search, it's not required, but I'll clear my previous search. And then again, I'll scan the ISBN barcode, or type the ISBN, and press Enter or click Search. Some ISBNs have an X as the final character. Include the X in the search. It doesn't matter if you type it in uppercase or lowercase. This search happens to result in one record. Rather than a list of records, the full record displays. That's because in user preferences, I chose to open record for editing when there's one search result. It also displays in text view because I selected that option in user preferences. Look for another video on user preferences. The International Standard Serial Number, or ISSN, is an eight-digit number in two groups of four, separated by a hyphen. There's an International ISSN Center, which coordinates ISSN centers in participating countries. National ISSN centers assign ISSNs to items such as journals, magazines, and newspapers. There can be wide variation in where publishers place an ISSN on an item, but it may be worthwhile to look for it. Serials can be difficult to search by title, since they often have only very common words in the title. The ISSN is often found in the masthead area of the publication, which tells you who the publisher is, how much it costs to subscribe, where to send change of address notices, and so on. This example from National Geographic is on the last page of the magazine. This example is on page 3 of the magazine, which may be a more common placement of the masthead. This example from a newspaper is on page 3. Some newspapers place this information on the editorial or opinion page. To search an ISSN, Change the index to ISSN, 
and then type the ISSN, including the hyphen, Here's another example. Library of Congress assigns LCCNs as a catalog items. The LC control number was formerly called the LC card number, and they were first issued in 1898. Before January of 2001, LCCNs consisted of a two-digit year corresponding to the year the item was cataloged and a six-digit serial number. This number was often displayed with a hyphen separating the year and the serial number. After December 2000, LCCNs consist of a four-digit year and a six-digit serial number. LCCNs sometimes have alphabetic prefixes. The LCCN is almost always in the CIP information on the title page Verso. In this example, the first four digits, 2013 or 2013, correspond to the year LC cataloged the book. There's no hyphen separating the year portion. For searching, proceed the LCCN with the index label NL colon. You could think of this as National Library. In general, enter the LCCN as printed on the item. This example is before the year 2000, so it has a two-digit year separated by a hyphen. Again, for searching, proceed the LCCN with the index label NL colon and enter the LCCN as printed on the item. In this example, because I've used the index label NL colon, it doesn't matter what index I've selected in the drop-down menu above. If I click the title on one of these records to look at the full record, you can see that number I entered is in the LCCN field. And our other example is pre-2000, but I still use the index label NL colon. You may have an OCLC number if you've previously searched by other methods and made a note of the OCLC number or printed the record, or if you already have the record in your local catalog. This is the most efficient search method when you're deleting holdings. To search by OCLC number, change the index to OCLC number, and then type the number. and then click search or press enter. Keyword search looks for individual words in any order in any of the fields included in the keyword search index. This includes author, title, subject, series, notes, and other fields. The order of search terms in a keyword search doesn't matter. To demonstrate this, I'll type a title, Man in the Moon, and click Search or press Enter. This results in nearly 100,000 records. I can make the search a bit more efficient by selecting Title rather than Keyword as my index. The Title search is also a keyword search, but the difference is that it only searches title-related fields. This includes, for example, the 240, 245, 246 fields, which are title fields, a series field, contents notes, and the title portions of name fields. I still have nearly 25,000 records. To demonstrate that the word order doesn't matter, I'll type moon in the man, still using the title index, and I still get the same number of records. I could save myself a little bit of typing by just typing the important words, since in a keyword search I don't have to include all of the words. And I still get the same number of records. For a complete list of the fields searched by the keyword and title indexes and other indexes, 
you can consult searching WorldCat indexes. And you can get to that document really easily by clicking the question mark next to terms and then clicking the searching WorldCat indexes link. Obviously, all of these searches give way too many results to work with. Next, we'll look at some more efficient searches. After doing a search that results in a large number of records, we can use FACET to refine the search. So for example, I could limit to language of cataloging English. This is the language of the bibliographic record, not the language of the resource that the bibliographic records describe. I could also limit by format, for example, music CD. And you'll notice the number of search results decreasing. I could also limit to a publication year, for example, 2005. Now I have only 228 records, but this still results in more than 200 records. Keyword search is generally not the best search in copy cataloging, especially from the basic search screen, as it tends to return large numbers of records. So if you are searching by something other than a number, it's often more efficient to use the advanced search screen. You can do that by clicking advanced search. The event search allows you to specify many different indexes. And there's a long list of indexes here. Each username can set defaults for which indexes display and in what order. We explain how to do this in another video on user preferences. By default, there are three rows to enter search terms and select indexes, but you can add more rows by clicking the green plus sign. And with the advanced search, you can search on up to five different indexes at the same time. You can also limit results by format. And notice these are alphabetical. So for example, we have book and then specific kinds of books, such as ebook, large print, print book, and so on. And if I continue scrolling down, we first have video, which is more general and then specific types of video, such as Blu-ray and DVD. You can also select a language. And again, this is the language of the item, not the language of cataloging. You can also specify a publication date, either a single year or a range of years. And if you click the question mark, you'll see some examples of how to enter years. You can also specify the language of cataloging. Remember, this is the language of the bibliographic record rather than the language of the item the bibliographic record describes. You can set a default language of cataloging in user preferences. Let's explore the difference between keyword and phrase searches. If I'm looking for a novel with the title The English Experience and I do a title keyword search, I get more than 16,000 records. And this is before applying any facets. If I apply the facet print book, I have a bit under 10,000 records. Because this is a keyword search, the words I enter can appear anywhere in title fields. For example, in the second record, we have experience and then English further down in the title the opposite order from the order I entered the words. Same thing in the fourth record. We have experience at the beginning of the title and then English almost at the end of the title. In the first record, on this initial search results screen, we don't see the word experience anywhere. But if we click the title to display the full record, and then search for experience on the screen, we can see that experience appears in the contents note, which is one of the fields indexed by the title index. The title phrase search looks for the words you entered in title related fields in order, beginning at the left side of the field. You can see in these search results, 
The words do appear in the order I entered them. And they appear at the beginning of the title field. When entering a title phrase search, you can save yourself some time and typing by omitting initial articles, a, an, and the, and the equivalents in other languages. As mentioned earlier, one advantage of doing an advanced search is that you can search on multiple indexes. So for example, I can enter a title and an author. I can enter a publication date if I know it. And I can filter to a specific format, in this case, book. And I can select language of the item, English. And language of cataloging is selected by default. Then when I do the search, I get just four records. If I want to do another search, I can click Advanced Search. And notice that my previous search is retained. This is useful because if you made a typo, for example, in the title, you could just correct the typo without having to re-enter everything else. However, if I do want to clear all of my previous search terms and all of my limits, I can click Reset in the bottom left corner of the screen. For the next example, I'm going to do a title phrase search for the real George Washington without any limits. I want to show you the difference between condensed and enhanced search results. In user preferences, you can select a default for how the search results display. In this example, the default is enhanced search results. You'll notice that each record displays on several lines with information such as the title, the author, the format, language, publisher information. And sometimes that may be what you want to see. You also see cover art. You can hover over the blue eye to see additional information. And then, of course, you can click the title to see the full record. But another useful way to display search results is condensed search results. And you can select that by clicking the View Condensed Search Results button. You'll notice that this display has one row for each record and it has information including title, author, publisher, publication date, format, and so on. You can sort by any column that has arrows. So for example, you can sort by title, author, and publication date. You can click the gear icon to customize which columns display and in which order. So if there's a column that you don't care about, if you don't care about language of cataloging, for example, because you have that selected as a default, you can deselect that box. If it's important to you whether or not your library holds it, you might want that to display earlier. You can click the up and down arrows to display that column where you want it, and then click Save. You can return to the Enhanced Search Results display by clicking View Enhanced Search Results. Publisher numbers can be found on musical and non-musical sound recordings, printed music, and video recordings. They're assigned by publishers, and there is no standard format. Searching by publisher number can be efficient, since these kinds of materials often have very common words in the title, and determining the author, publisher, and date can sometimes be difficult. In this example from an audio compact disc, the publisher number is SMK63155, and it's on the disc as well as on the spine of the case and the back of the case. The case also has a universal product code, or UPC. You can search this as a standard number, either by typing all the digits, including the small zero at the beginning and the small one at the end, or by scanning the barcode. The example on the left, from a DVD, has a publisher number on the spine of the case, and the back of the case has an ISBN 
and a UPC barcode. The example on the right shows a plate number, which is usually printed at the bottom of each page of notated music. For searching, you might want to combine this with the title, the composer, or arranger name, or publisher. To illustrate how the publisher number search can be very efficient, let's first search for our audio compact disc example with a combination of title, author, publisher, and format. We retrieve about 33 records. To search by publisher number, change the index to publisher number. Type the number, omitting all punctuation and spaces. In this example, we retrieve four records. We can search the UPC barcode by changing the index to standard number and then scanning the barcode. And this time we retrieve four records. For our notated music example, we can enter the readily identifiable information, the title, 15 three-part inventions, the author, Bach, and the format musical score. We retrieve about 98 records. However, if we take advantage of the publisher number search, still retaining the author, Bach, and the format musical score, we retrieve just seven records. For more information about searching using the simplified cataloging role, from the Neat Help menu, you can select General Help, and then select Metadata Services, World Share Record Manager, and then scroll down to Simplified Cataloging Role. And then under Search and Catalog, you can click Advanced Search. On any help page, you can click the PDF icon if you want to print a PDF. And on the help page, by clicking Contact OCLC Support, you can find contact information for OCLC support in your region.